This is day 52 of my budget bungalow build. I only have three workers today, so I'm not expect, expecting so much. But I told Tony and the old senior citizens to make the doors because I already bought the materials. And the loy can slowly continue the rendering because he's trying, he's really trying to learn. But since he is there, might as well just slow, do what he can do. And the reason that I'm not clearing out the rubbles there yet, because um, I don't want somebody will put a tent on top of the flooring of the old house temporarily. Anything to make it awkward and make it unlivable. Um, my topic for today, like I said yesterday, that I got problems with computing, so I'm just going to do it. Um... By short video, different topics and the different videos, because my computer is crashing with the long videos lately. So I'm now using my old one. This one, I have a few questions. This was sent to me a few days ago. Last one is the other two weeks ago. But I just got around to it because, like, I grouped them all together. It's asking about hollow blocks, how they are in the Philippines, basically. But the other one's already got, been using hollow blocks and asking me that he wants to do an extension like second floor or maybe third floor. And I was asking, what is the strength that's holding it? It's not just hollow blocks. So the topic for today will be how st strong is the hollow blocks in the Philippines? For me, there is no question that Hollow blocks here in the Philippines have no strength. And I'll still stay to my what my word is. Hollow blocks are just infill. So I'll just turn it off and then continue when I'm there. So this is what they've done. This is the first frame of the door that Tony has created. And there he is creating the second one that is also almost done. He's not the, like I said, he's not the fastest in precision work. But since um, we're almost done anyway, we're just going to be finishing this together. This is old Lito sifting the sand that we have um, taken from the river. So that's how they sifted it. In which I was moaning before that the old man was using it on his dirty kitchen. All sifted and all that. And not even buying it, so they so called replaced the two sacks. Two sacks of not fine sand is different than two sacks of already fine sand, it's got a different quantity. So, but at least I got a good talking to them that they should stop abusing it. So here today i got three workers one is doing the sifting of the sun and one is doing the frame and the loy there since he is part of my domestic stuff so i told the loy to just do the rendering as slow as he can be and he did make it so slow so the topic that I want to talk today is about how strong is the hollow blocks in the Philippines. Now I'm going to be looking at here because I'll be making it into an example. Hollow blocks in the Philippines are only in feel. They are not load bearing. Do not substitute hollow blocks for your tie beams and support beams because that is the strength of the house columns tie beams support beams now to answer the questions of those ladies that um building their house or building an extension a second floor or a third floor and they're asking me if what are the things to use for the second floor second was asking me that what is the rebars to be used for a second floor two-story house now the building code of the philippines is saying that a four inch hollow block 
whatever kind of mix you put in there is only a filling is an infill regardless of what you put kind of mix on it now the strength of a house comes from a column i suggest like the first person that's asking me that you she bought a hollow block house and she wants to do a second floor ma'am please change the column if it's maybe it's not suitable for a second floor the column should be 16 mm rebars and 10 mm rings um it should be dug about a minimum of one meter down the ground because i had some foreigner um, telling me that I give bad advice because he is building. Look at his build. A freestanding on the bottom three-story house in the Philippines. And the most ludicrous thing, this man is so particular with earthquakes. And yet, when I was lo looking at the diggings on his column foundation, I was shocked. To see that their plan was 300 mm deep and he told them to have 500. This bungalow, it might be a budget bungalow, but you've seen I've dug 800 millimeters down and the matting is bended on the end. If not, I put some rocks on it for the um, added flexibility of it. So the the cement will go underneath it and then the matting will stay in the middle so the most integral part is the foundation column and yet you got the guts this australian telling me i give by the advice because he is making his hollow blocks and building a three-story house with no support beams on the columns and the uh, columns he's building it's just almost the same size as the columns that I made on this budget bungalow. I say, if you want to follow him, but I advise you for your own safety, please, if you're making a three-story house here in the Philippines, the building code tells you it has to be 1.6 meters down. And the flexibility of your matting should matter. And then the support beams should also be the same strength as your column. There should be support beams on the bottom because you're carrying that much weight, not just a header on the top. I mean, foundation really matters. When I was building my castle, my own house, I had a meeting with the structural engineer with the architect they're all my friends so they're explaining me what's the important of which and that what is the building code reg why is it like that why is it like this so i build so much strength on the foundation of my house i use 20 millimeters rebars on my retaining wall poured i didn't use hollow block poured so you see the matting how close together in my video dare to dream that is the build that i used to do for high end houses but this is a budget bungalow you're watching i have even though this is a budget bungalow i make sure that we have the right digging for the column down there it's 800 millimeters and look no second floor it's only carrying a wooden roof and the beam supporting the bottom all around the bungalow and in the middle and the header beam i even have lintels all around so there is no substitute for strength and safety now if you're particular with the earthquakes here an unsupported columns more more likely to bend down. Look at this column here. There's no 
that you're looking at from the old house. Imagine this is a column made of concrete. There is no support beam and it's carrying three story or two story. Good that the store two story of this house is made of wood. So it's got no weight. But imagine that you have a concrete slab. And there's earthquake. Now the columns that you created because there's no support beam on the bottom will just like um be cross leg, like a table with cross leg. Now I'm uh, going back that hollow blocks in the Philippines are mostly made inferiorly or crap. You can just crumble them. So that's why it's only an infill. Now you can um reason out that oh i'm making my own hollow blocks it might be just four in one bags who cares there is no substitute for the beams and columns done properly columns dug properly under the ground with the stress of the matting suitable for earthquake i mean ladies and gentlemen that's those things that you don't um substitute i don't this Budget bungalow is more stronger than the usual houses that you say, see around here in the Philippines. It might be made of simple materials, but you've seen that I dig 80 mm down with the matting that's supported with rocks because I want the, the cement to go underneath to hold the matting up with a column tied into it. That is how you build. The, and then I have tie beam supporting in the middle all around the building. Then I have lintel supporting in the middle all around the building. Then the header beam. And this is only carrying a wooden trusses. And do not substitute the strength and safety of your family because you're relying on the hollow blocks that you made. Hollow blocks are only in feel. It's not a substitute for tie beams and columns. Proper size column of what your requirement is. Three-story house and the size of your column is just like the size of the budget bungalow. Come on! And there's no support beams. Yes, ma'am, you need to check your columns if you want to have second floor in your house that you bought. It should be 16mm wrap around with 10mm rebars and should be dug down 1 meter down on the ground. 1.2 would be better than I know that you are safety there. And then put beams all around because you are now carrying a slab on the second floor. And if you're going to make a third floor, make sure it's 1.6 down 1.6 meter down is your digging and the rebar should be bigger it's not for 16 mm it should be 6 to 8 16 mm in per column the major column and then your rebar your tie beams the ties all the beams that you have created should be made of 16 mm as well and 10 mm there is no substitute for the safety of the structure do not rely on the hollow blocks hollow blocks are infilled like i said even if you make it pro four in one four in one sack of cement you only make four hollow blocks where is the strength on that one there is no substitutes for the rebars that created in the columns and the tie beams Hollow blocks are only in feel. It's not the structure of the house. And some Australian who knows better, who just come here for holiday and he knows everything, and I'm the one who don't know anything. Um, but I don't want you to see his channel because he's so desperate to get noticed. But thanks for the shout out. But your audience, if they have the intellect, if they know better than you, knows that there is no substitute for the beams and the columns done properly. The beams and the columns are the strength of the house. I cannot say anymore. Hollow blocks do not rely on it even if you make four out of a bag out of a bag. Because you got no rebars that's forming it. It's only an infill. The building code of the Philippines say a 4-inch hollow blocks is only an infill. In my castle, I even use 6-inch. And the mix that I use for filling up the hollow blocks is 1, 2, 1, 2. 
two sacks of sand. Uh, one, one, two, yeah. Two sacks of sand. Uh, two, sa three, two sacks of sand and one sack of cement. Because I know that the hollow blocks is only an infill. Now, when I look at a building with no support beams, freestanding columns and tiny as the same strength because the video is really shaky and blurred. Um, I was looking at it. The, bear, the columns are tiny, supporting a three-story house. I'm scared for the people that's going to be living there. There is no support beams on the foundation. And three-story with freestanding column and just relying because he made his own hollow blocks. Hollow blocks, I've said, is only an infill. It's not the strength of the house. Anyone who's familiar with building, anyone that's been making buildings knows that it is. I have been talking to structural engineers, engineers, architects, civil engineers, mechanical engineers. There is no substitute for beams and columns properly laid out lintels to support your doors and windows that is what i i i build i mean i always think about the safety of the building this may be a budget bungalow but i know this is stronger than most filipino houses